let me set the vibe. It's Friday night and your parents just got off work and they're taking you to a blockbuster. And you and your friends are gonna stay up all night watching PG-13 and playing video games. Now, if that unlocked a core memory for you, like it did for me, let me know in the comments below. I really, really miss those days. And it's really sad that kids these days, kids these days, just don't get to experience the joy that is physical media and that experience, uh, which for me was pretty magical. And I'm a huge physical media fan. I uh, have a couple examples here. Princess Mononoke on Blu-ray, one of my favorite films. Um, it has a lot of bonus features, special features that you just don't get with streaming and, uh, and digital video rentals. Another example, uh, Street Sharks on VHS. You can see it has the $9.97 price tag from Kmart from the 90s when this was coming out and it's still sealed because I do not own a VHS player, um, but the reason I got it was because I was a huge Street Sharks fan as a kid and you just can't find this on streaming. I don't even know if you can find it on digital video rental stores either. Um, and that's the case for thousands of other titles, thousands of movies and TV shows that just don't exist on streaming or video rentals today because of licensing, copyright issues, uh, who knows? Uh, maybe they'll get censored and taken offline. And they really only exist in physical form. And this brings me to the larger topic of streaming, which is what I wanna talk about today. And I think it's safe to say streaming has won the video content war. It is now, I think, a $40 billion industry in the United States. And for some perspective, at the height of DVD sales back in like 2005, uh, that included DVD rentals. It was a $16 billion market. So most of us are subscribed to streaming services. I think there was a survey that recently came out saying that most Americans have subscribed or are subscribed to at least three streaming services per month and pay an average of like 30 or $40 per month to do so. Now that the writer's strike is over, and now that these streaming companies are now saying we're gonna raise prices, I just kinda wanna talk about what that might mean for video content and the future of how we consume content and how we think about the price that we're willing to pay to do so. So in this streaming model, we've gotten used to paying a pretty low price for content and Netflix, I think, was very good at setting our expectations here and kind of luring us into streaming as basically a utility for many of us. Uh, the average person consumes, believe it or not, more than three hours of streaming content every day. Uh, some estimates put that higher. And I think a lot of us view our Netflix subscription, our Disney Plus subscription, our HBO Max subscription as a utility like our electric bill. And Netflix did a really good job, I think, when it came out of offering this quality, more or less quality content library. Um, reliable is a word I would use, a reliable content library for the price of what was basically one movie ticket because movie tickets nowadays are like $11 and they go all the way up to like 20, 25. If you're going to be seeing a movie in like the 3d IMAX with all the 4d effects or whatever. And so now that most of us are subscribed to streaming, we've kind of stopped using physical media and stopped renting 
movies digitally as well. And we've gotten used to consuming cheap content, which is strange because content has never been cheap to consume. Video content has always been expensive to make, and it's always been more or less a gamble and a high risk investment where Hollywood takes outside investors and takes their money and produces something in a short time and it's a high risk, high reward scenario. And a lot of times it's likely to fail. When we used to pay for DVD rentals at the video store, VHS rentals, or go see the movies, we often forget how expensive that was. And the average price of a DVD rental back in say 2005 for a new release was around $5, which is over $8 today adjusted for inflation. And a movie ticket back then was almost $7. And today adjusted for inflation, that's almost $11, which is pretty much more or less what the base price of a movie ticket is today. Video rentals and movie tickets haven't gotten more expensive, actually. Um, following inflation, they, they trend about the same. It's just that our expectations of consuming content have gotten cheaper. And I mean, why would you rent movies digitally and buy physical media that's expensive uh, when you can just get a Netflix subscription for 10 to 15 bucks a month. I mean, and I'm just as guilty as you are uh, subscribing. In the next few years, I think we'll likely see a consolidation of streaming services. I think the big streaming wars are in full effect and eventually there will be one or two main providers that will win out and I believe Netflix is the only streaming service that is actually profitable and the others are not. And studios are actually losing tons of money on streaming despite streaming as a total revenue business growing more than $40 billion. And the reason for that is like I said, content is expensive to make. and. If you're going to back in the old model when it was more reliable for studios um, and you'd go to rent a DVD from Blockbuster, um, Blockbuster would pay a distribution fee um, and it was usually several hundred dollars um, to be able to rent that video out and it would track how many times it rented that particular film and then pay a percentage of what it earned on those rentals back to the studios. Um, and that was a fairly reliable model. And like I said, new releases were generally around $5 and older films, uh, I think they were around a dollar, $2. And today, so if I'm paying $15 a month for a Netflix subscription, and I'm consuming on average three or more hours of video content every day. That's a lot of different movies and TV shows that I'm watching and I'm watching a lot more than I would be if I were renting those movies from a DVD rental store. And what's happening is that the studios get smaller pieces of that pie because they have to split that among all of the content licensing that's in their libraries and pay back. So the cheaper that you pay for content, it only makes sense the less money that studios and writers and producers and production companies and filmmakers ultimately are making through the streaming model. So where does that leave us now that streaming has taken over and we're all subscribed and view it as a utility. Um, and, and what does that mean for physical media? I, I do think physical media will make a little bit of a comeback. 
uh, similar to how vinyl made a comeback. I think we'll see a comeback with physical media. In the case of Blu-rays, um, Blu-rays are unique because, you know, similar to vinyl, uh, I think this is a, a more or less fair comparison. Um, they're very high quality. Um, you know, they store uh, tens of gigabytes of data on them, um, and especially 4K Blu-ray releases, uh, much higher bit rate, much higher quality than what you get with streaming. And the audio quality is often much better as well. And that's because um, it can hold more data in these files and it is mixed and mastered uh, better for different home theater options. I think there will always be a market for Blu-ray content. And I'm excited to see what happens there. Um, we really don't have many good Blu-ray rental services right now. I think there's Gamefly and like 3D Blu-ray rentals online, something like that. I would wager a guess to say, at least I hope, that we see more Blu-ray rental services pop up because I think that'd be really, really cool for those of us who really value high quality content. I'm also curious what happens with digital video rentals. You know, I'm not talking about streaming, I'm talking about like the iTunes store and Amazon where you can still go rent movies and TV shows, new releases, uh, pay for like the at-home theater experience if you wanna pay like the $25 or whatever it is. Um, there was that weird time between Blockbuster existing and Netflix taking over uh, with streaming where we were all kind of like starting to rent movies digitally and they were around the same prices as what you'd get in like a Blockbuster or Hollywood video. Um, you know, right around $5, $6 for a new release and, you know, 99 cents or whatever for some of the older content on those libraries. And now that those libraries are getting updated with much higher quality content, 4K files, um, I'm excited to see what ends up happening with that and if people end up turning to digital rentals as like an alternative to streaming uh if it if it ends up becoming a wash price wise so i'm interested to see what happens there and i know a lot of different collections are you know bringing their own content libraries to rental services as well um, and have their own streaming services as well. <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Personally, I canceled all of my video subscriptions uh, this past month. I was subscribed to Netflix, Apple TV, HBO Max. Uh, what else did I have? I had Hulu briefly. Um, and I, I mean, I was paying like, 50 bucks or more a month. Oh, Disney Plus, because The Mandalorian and Ahsoka and like all the Star Wars stuff came out. Um, and I just, I got sick of it. I, I was not using streaming to its full benefit. And I just, there's too many, too many titles on those content providers. And in my opinion, not enough good, high quality content and, uh, and I just didn't love some of the new releases and exclusive content coming out um, that originally attracted me to those platforms. And I will say this about that, is that because of the business model of streaming and because of the low costs that we're paying to consume content, um, and because studios don't make as much of a profit, if any, from streaming, um, and the unique business model of attracting new subscribers and competing for subscribers, that means that they have to rely on new release and exclusive content. And unfortunately, what ends up happening with that is that franchises went out 
and we see the same sequels coming out for the same types of franchise films and we see the same titles and the same regurgitated content coming out and that's because that's because people buy it people want to see it it sells it attracts new subscribers and unfortunately the trade-off to that is that a lot of the lesser known shows and movies uh, don't get funded and don't get um, renewed for future seasons because we have to make way for this like franchise-esque uh, new release content that is geared towards attracting eyeballs and new subscribers to bring in income. And um, I, I just, I don't love that about the, about the streaming environment. And what I found was that I was actually spending less money on digital video rentals, which I went back to, uh, than I was on streaming. And I've been enjoying that a lot more. If there's a new release, I'll try to see it in theaters if I can. Um, and if there is a new release on iTunes or Amazon, uh, sometimes I'll pay for it. And if there's a rental that I really wanna see, <clears throat> I'll just rent it. And I'm, I mean, I'm only paying like, you know, 20 or 30 bucks uh, right now for, for all of the content that I need to consume in a month. And another avenue that I've been exploring is my local library. There's a ton of DVD and Blu-ray films that a lot of libraries have access to, and those are completely free. So I'll try to rent those whenever I can, if possible. And there's also a couple of library apps. One's called Hoopla, and one is called Canopy. Um, and there might be a few others as well. And at least where I am, my local library uh, pays for those services. And so I'm able to go on the Hoopla and Canopy streaming libraries and rent a film from those libraries. And I, I think with Canopy, I get 10 films per month and they've got a lot of great content on there. They've got a lot of films from the Criterion Collection. They've got a lot of new releases. Uh, they've got some, uh, some great courses stuff as well, I think, um, and a lot of instructional videos. And I'm having a lot of fun with that. All in all, this video is to say that right now, as prices are rising in streaming, just know that content has always been expensive. Ultimately, it's up to us as the consumers to decide what content is worth paying for. And I hope we make the right decision. Thanks for watching. If you have a favorite physical media film, uh, let me know what it is and why down in the comments below.